Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater, and today I have a question for you. What was the first electric guitar? The answer really depends on how you frame the question and how you define electric guitar. For example, George Breed submitted a patent for an electric guitar pickup system way back in 1890. And a musician and inventor named Paul Tutmark was experimenting with electric basses and electric guitars as early as 1931. Of course, jazz players were already experimenting with using pickups on their hollow bodies in the 1920s and the early 1930s. Production hollow body Spanish electric guitars were released commercially in 1936. For example, Gibson had their ES-150, which was closely associated with jazz virtuoso Charlie Christian. By the way, that ES in the name stands for electric Spanish. But when many of us think electric guitar, we think solid bodies. So what was the first solid body electric guitar? If you dig in, you'll certainly encounter names including Paul Bigsby, Leo Fender, Ted McCarty, and of course Les Paul, who were working on solid body electrics in the 1940s and 1950s. And we have Slingerland with their Songster Model 401, a little known solid body that was actually released in 1936. There was even a company called Stromberg that was working on a unique transducer system that worked with radios as amplifiers as early as 1928. But it's pretty universally accepted that the first commercially successful production solid body electric guitar was the Rickenbacker A22 lap steel, which became known as the frying pan due to its unique shape. Although Adolf Rickenbacker himself referred to it as the pancake for some reason. These guitars were produced commercially from 1932 until 1939. And we've got an amazing example of a Rickenbacker A22 here beside me today. We came across it recently in a listing on Sweetwater's Gear Exchange, our used gear marketplace. It's an incredibly clean example of this historic instrument, complete with a case that's in great shape as well as a matching amplifier. When we noticed this piece of history in the for sale listings, we just had to bring it out and show it to you in this video. What's the backstory? Well, George Beauchamp, a musician and tinkerer from Texas, was really into Hawaiian music where the lap steel is often used as a melody instrument. The problem was getting the acoustic instruments of the day loud enough to be heard over a full band. Now, as a side note, that's what also led to the development of resonator guitars such as Dobro's, that never-ending search for increased volume. Beauchamp set out to develop a pickup design to try to make the instruments louder, and he actually started working with instrument amplification as early as 1925. As you might expect, he encountered feedback problems when he put the pickups on his acoustic instruments, so he began thinking about a solid instrument as a way to combat that feedback. At the time, Beauchamp worked at National String Instrument Corporation, and with another national employee, Paul Barth, they began experimenting. They enlisted yet another national employee, Harry Watson, to make a solid wooden body and neck and install Beauchamp's pickup on it. The experiments were a success. So in 1931, Beauchamp, Barth, and a toolmaker named Adolf Rickenbacker, who was an immigrant from Switzerland and also a shareholder in National, began producing the instruments under the brand Row Patent Corporation. The company name came from an abbreviation for Electro Patent Instruments, Row Patent. In 1933, the company name was changed to Electro String, and then later changed to Rickenbacker Electro, and eventually Rickenbacker Guitars. Now the production version of these instruments, the A22, featured a cast aluminum body and it was adopted for both Hawaiian music and also had a success with the jazz bands of the day. Beauchamp received a patent for the frying pan in 1937, but of course by then other companies were making electric guitars of their own as I mentioned earlier. Those successful commercially produced solid bodies were still nearly 15 years in the future. The frying pan features a one-piece cast aluminum body and neck, a pickup based around large horseshoe magnets, and a single volume control. It was designed to be laid across the musician's lap and played with a slide. It has a 22 and a half inch scale length. 
Now interestingly, Electro String and later Rickenbacker also made amplifiers designed by a radio manufacturer named Van Nest, and those used James B. Lansing, more commonly known as JBL, speakers. And another side note related to that, during the early 1940s, Leo Fender was known as a repairman for those Rickenbacker amps. Now let's check out Sweetwater's own Brian Lemert playing this incredible instrument and amp. enjoyed this look at a true piece of music instrument history and one that's actually available for purchase on Sweetwater's Gear Exchange. If you haven't checked out Gear Exchange, you should definitely take a look. As we've seen with this Rickenbacker guitar, Gear Exchange is the best place to both buy and sell used gear. Everything from guitars like this vintage Rickenbacker to basses and pedals to keyboards and pro audio to recording equipment and much, much more. Gear Exchange is super easy to use, and you can even sell your gear with no seller or transaction fees if you choose a Sweetwater gift card as your payout. And of course, you can both buy and sell with complete confidence because you know that Sweetwater has your back. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.